is there to say about Super Mario Brothers that hasn't already been said? Almost everyone's played this game at one point in lives or another, and to this day, it is the textbook example of how to do a platform. It introduced two staple Mario characters, Bowser, King of the Koopas, and the new damsel, Princess Peach. Aw oh, man, her name's Princess Toadstool. Get it right. Very cute, Junior. Now go sit with the Dr. Robotics Society like a good little whiner. Now where was I? Oh, the story. Bowser has invaded the Mushroom Kingdom. He has transformed the Mushroom people into bricks, stones, and horsehair mushrooms. He also took Princess Peach hostage, and now it's up to Mario and Luigi to save her. That's right, this game actually had a fleshed out story, compared to Pac-Man and Dig Dug and other games of the time. The gameplay was unlike anything seen on an Atari console or in the arcade. It was a lot more developed. Don't want to go the long way through a stage? Take a pipe. However, though they may have bonuses, they aren't always guaranteed to be shortcuts. Smash a random block to reveal a vine, allowing you to climb to coin heaven. You have mushrooms that make you bigger, flowers that allow you to throw fire, and stars that make you invincible. If you jump at a random tile on the screen, you can get a hidden coin or even a one-up. And to shortcuts, they're in the underground stages. There's a bigger variety of enemies than had been seen on the Atari 2600. Stuff like Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Piranha Plants, Lakitis, and Bullet Bills. These would become staple enemies of the Mario franchise. Most enemies can be beaten by jumping on them. It won't work on Spinies though, and the Koopas and Fuzzy Beetles will just retreat into their shells. Some parts of the game are underwater. There, you must avoid cheap cheeps and bloopers, or burn them with fireballs. Yeah, water defying fire, only in a video game. Thought you beat Bowser at the end of that castle? Nope. You just beat a fake and save the toad. The real Peach and Bowser are at the end of Castle 8. Think it's over? Now if you want the second quest, where the Goombas are replaced with Fuzzy Beetles and all enemies are faster. And how about that music? Who can forget the classic Underworld theme? Or the Starman theme? The swimming theme. Or the castle theme. But the one that everyone's quick to remember is this. This song has become so recognized with the games, it's practically become the franchise's theme song. It's so famous, in fact, that Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu has gone on record to say that it should become the new Japanese national anthem. The game has been re-released numerous times and has even gotten a few variations. All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros., for example, was a retool handed out as a raffle prize. It was mostly the same as SMB1, but the graphics were from an abomination that we'll discuss in detail next time. And had the added bonus of Japanese radio celebrities. Yay! Now we're getting into the wide world of sequels. 
starting with Super Mario Brothers Special. Never heard of it? That's because it only came out in Japan. It was developed by Hudson for the PC-8801 and the Sharp X1 computers. It's got a smaller color palette and it doesn't scroll, but it brings in elements from earlier Mario outings. 